Um, yep. I think there's what five trillion, and so sniping these lows on on loan token is 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 key too because that gives you leverage to get yield down the road that otherwise may be unobtainable in the same way that pulse validators as pulse price rises it costs more and more to yeah. create a validator the same thing with loan like to get portions of that uh yield that's fed to loan holders i mean it's going to cost more and more to get exposure down the road a hundred percent and and when you um when you're when you're like looking at those things too like that exposure to um like loan isn't paid out in in loan right it's paid out in usdl and pls so you're trying to basically like the the prices is, is 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 almost irrelevant when you're trying to capture that side of the yield. So um, that's something else that's kind of interesting about that play. Is again, if you're like just grabbing this early, it's almost like grabbing a piece of a of a. Nah, I don't want to make that comparison. But your your payout, right? Like you're basically just what is my cost for a percentage of that yield pool, right? Uh, and then you also have the basically a call option to sell it at some point in the future. So. I think what we'll see with loan over time is almost kind of similar to what we've seen with some of like the HSI and pulled stakes where they're, they're looking at as a gamesmanship of, okay, what does it cost me to get a piece of this yield? And it starts to kind of have a, a price chart that moves around in a, a slightly different way than just the speculative push where there's a handful of users that are like, all right, it cost me X amount to get Y amount of yield for this length of time. Cool. I'm in on that. So I think we'll see some interesting mechanics on, on loans price chart. And just to hop back to what access point before, um, the, the way it matters when you're opening up the vaults at the load is if you're using it like Walrus says to get exposure to something because you can't go back in time if the price goes up to get your the same amount of USDL to buy the same amount that you would now. So it's it's essentially locking in your leverage uh, at the lows, locking in a long position at the lows. And then basically that leverage long becomes risk free as the price starts going up. And th th there's something to this stuff that I think is really important, like when you when you look at like really, really sophisticated markets, that's why they'll typically say like, they don't ask like, how much do you own? They ask like, what's your exposure? Because you can basically have a relationship to an event in a variety of ways, right? So how much do you, how much do you own? Well, well I, have, I have 10 shares. Oh, well, well, I have a 10X long on it at the same valuation right now. Okay, well, one of us has very different exposure, right? Um, and, and you can look at it as, using different different parts of these DeFi tools that are essentially a way to say what do i think will happen and what does that end up doing right so um i mean it can be hex it can be any of these things right so if you're thinking hey this big bullish thing is going to happen to pls okay how do i get a lot of exposure to pls that's one way but you could also say hey there's this really really bullish thing for pls it's really but plx tends to kind of run with it maybe I can get a bit a better exposure to whatever that external event is through the PLSX price, even though it's not PLS, but you think you got something coming to PLS. It could be the vault like that. That's one of these things to think about as we, as we kind of grow and we add all these extra little tools here is, Hey, I think X thing will happen. How do I get the, the safest, largest amount of exposure to that? And that's what these DeFi tools will start to help with too.